Hi guys, so I wanted to talk about the latest painting that I did today. I'll just hold it up. Today I painted this painting, it's acrylic on um, board. It has a gesso layer and then it's acrylic paint. And to do all of these shapes, I actually used my X-Arm 7 to lay out the shape and then I filled in the colors by hand. And the entire painting took about five hours of painting time. I'm using dictionaries and lists to hold the brush strokes that the um, robot is using. And one of my bugs that I spent the most time working out was a dictionary that needed to be deleted at the end of a loop before it went to the next shape because all the, the brush strokes in a shape are held in the dictionary. And it's a dictionary with lists in it and each brush stroke, individual brush stroke is a list. And when it goes through, I need it to erase that and then find a new shape to paint. And what ended up happening when I did the trials, I think the trials are just over here. This is the, the practice one I was doing and let's see if there's a good example. So you can see here it was trying to paint this rectangle, but then there's a circle here as well. And that's because the dictionary wasn't actually deleting what was in it. And so when it went to paint the next shape, it would paint all the shapes. So here you can see is also there was a green one, but then there's some round circles in there. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out why did it keep painting multiple shapes in one spot. And then I went out for a run and while I was out, I realized that when it's reading the CSV file that becomes a list, it actually has at the end of that append. And so it's always adding to the list rather than deleting it and writing over it. So my solution was to put all four of them into a dictionary. Another issue with this painting that I'll fix in future ones is it was actually in my previous painting, I had a check to make sure when it placed a shape, it wasn't covering previous shapes. That way I'm not wasting paint. And in this one, it actually was overlapping sh previous shapes. And I think that's because I didn't actually have the check, for instance, for this rectangular shape. It only checked a small area that was the size of a circle because the circle was my first shape. It only checked a small area and not the whole thing. So there's quite a few shapes you'll see in the beginning that I lay out and they end up and I perf perfect the lines and I fill it in and I blow dry it. And then that entire shape just gets blown away by the next shapes layered on top. So that's why you see, if I can show you the shine, there's a lot of different edges underneath. So for instance, you can see there's there used to be a circle there that's almost completely covered up. So there's a lot of shapes in there that were layered on top. And I know it was five hours because the video that I've sped up was five hours. And that includes times to mix the colors as well as to make the, the painting. So I will flip over to the process of painting and I will narrate what I'm up to and hopefully you can see that there's a lot more going on in this painting than just some simple shapes on a panel. So I'm excited to share that with you. So the video starts with me putting tape around the edges. This is to keep that white border there. The panel has been gessoed white by me and what gesso does is it actually seals the wood. The paint can sit on top. Now I'm putting on a clear glaze and that actually seals the tape so you don't get that bleeding edge that sometimes you get if the tape is not fully on. So the next step is where I mix the colors. So I'm just grabbing the spreadsheet to look at it to see what colors are required. I definitely in future versions want the computer to just spit this out for me because you can see me writing in my notebook what the recipes are and that way I can grab those later on when I'm running out of paint. So there are 10 colors that I use and when my computer is generating the compositions it picks from two color sets and that's why I have two sets of five paints. So in these paintings this is the second time I'm using the robot to paint one of my machine learning abstract paintings or a version of it and I use the robot to lay out the the shape and then I've noticed the robot is not very good at filling in shapes. So then I paint alongside the robot and I perfect the shape and just make sure that it's, it's a solid color in the area. Because this is going to be for the next four hours that I'm sitting here, not you guys, I turned on my radio to listen to at the same time. Now usually I would have painted the background color 
onto the panel and not left it white because at the end of the day there won't be any white on the panel. However, because the color was going to be the darkest color, the dark blue, I decided to just leave it white for now and then start filling in the blues later on, which you'll see me do. So there again, I'll be painting alongside it, but I'll be painting the background while the robot's painting the shapes. So whenever the robot uses the darkest shape, I hit a button that says clean the brush just because the next colors will be lighter. I don't want the darkest color mixing in with the light, but you'll notice when I'm painting with lighter colors as we go, I won't do a clean cycle. Like there, I didn't do a clean cycle before between the white going to the darkest color because I didn't mind if that white mixed in because I was going to paint over top of it. So there you can see me touching up those two darkest colors. And another thing is in this version is I removed the wait period where I let the paint, the robot sit and wait for paint to dry. Instead, because I'm sitting along with it, I take out a hair dryer, I dry the next layer and, and go from there. You'll notice throughout the video that yellow takes a, a lot of layers to actually get a very bright color. And so that's why you'll see me paint over the yellow many times. And another thing to mention is I'm still working on where the best spot for the camera is. This is my second attempt of camera placement. Unfortunately, this means that the painting itself is upside down. I thought of changing the code to make it right side up for the viewer, but then decided against that and instead to just leave it as is and see how it worked out before I go into the code. See there you can see again that the in our version the bottom edge of that red or pink triangle was off a little bit and so I want to pull that in future versions. So the four shapes that you're going to be seeing are two different half circles. So there's right side up and upside down. There's a full circle and then there's that rectangular shape. And as I said before in the intro, those are the four shapes in the dictionary. So that actually is a good example where it placed a half circle and then right on top it placed a full um, circle. So we lost that shape. So it was a waste of time and a waste of paint to place that shape. But I just kept going with this code and there you can see we just lost that yellow half circle that was underneath. So that's why this painting is taking extra long. In the future I will have catches to make sure a shape is not placed where it will fully cover in different shapes. So here's where you can see I'm starting to add that dark background. I do have a picture of what the final painting is going to be, so I know where that blue is going to peek out. Another thing about the dark blue is because there's very little white in that color is it will take a few layers of paint to put in. So that's why I've started putting that, lay that dark blue in now so I can add extra layers as we go. Now that pink corner circle actually was supposed to be red and so I'll have to go into the code and figure out why. The only reason I know that is because I have a picture of what the final painting should be and there was actually two shapes that it just blatantly picked the wrong color so I'm not sure why that happened it, and that's where I know there might be a bug in the code and it doesn't really matter for this painting where there's random shapes but potentially in the future where a, a circle or shape has to be a specific color that'll be important to catch. Now another thing that's happening is whenever it's painting this rectangle it's counting the length of the brush stroke and deciding based on that when to get more paint and when it paints a rectangle it actually does four dips with which is way too much paint so you'll see later on as I notice this happening consistently I will start moving the paint bucket out of the robot's way that way it's actually not dipping into more paint. So there's a good example. You can see that first yellow half circle really didn't fill in the whole shape. But as I look at the final one beside me, barely any of that half circle yellow shape is in the finished version. Likewise, this yellow shape that I'm filling in, the first one, 
it's not in the final version or very little of it is but I spend a lot of time making it perfect That's another good example where yellow doesn't really go over that dark color. But at the end of this painting, you'll notice that yellow, those two yellow rectangles I keep putting lots of layers of paint on end up not really being an important shape in the painting. Likewise, that pink one that it just painted. So technically I could have probably been done by now and it's halfway through. So I basically did two hours of shapes that don't show in the final painting. And I didn't mind letting the robot paint over colors that weren't dry because I knew I would be painting new colors. One thing I like that's happening in this that I wasn't expecting is this, or you can see where it's painted rectangles off on the green tape and because the brush isn't all the way down onto the tape it actually paints stripes that are equal distance apart and I was thinking that would be a cool shape to do in the future where it's not fully filled in. There you can see that rectangle turned a bit green because there was the full yellow triangle underneath that wasn't fully dry. It's funny watching myself work so hard on getting these layers perfect and I can look at the final version right now and see that those shapes are going to be covered. Now the robot itself has a round brush that it's using and I am using a flat brush so I can get the corners that's why I haven't really worried about the robot filling in that full rectangle shape and doing the corners because my brush can do better and I had thought about potentially putting a flat brush into the robot but I stopped because once the brush starts rotating it really has to be centered really well and basically for now I thought I would just stick to one style of brush and then use the dexterity in my own hand to correct those edges and collaborate with the robot and figure out the best way of going forward with painting alongside a robot and what are its capabilities, what's it good at and what am I good at and then work together with it. So there you can see it's just painted a dark circle on top of a light circle which was painted on top of a dark circle so there's a lot of layers of paint in this painting. So you can see I've moved the light pink out of the way. So when the robot goes back to dip into the paint, it's actually not dipping into anything because it was putting too much paint on it. So now you can see the paints are back to where the robot will dip in it. I do have a camera that can go along with this robot, but I have not spent time learning how that they'll work together yet. So looking at the final version, we're now starting to get into shapes that will be in the final painting.
You'll notice there I painted that full navy area with almost a lighter navy and it, there was just a little bit of white on my brush and so I just went with it and filled in that whole area. That last circle that was painted was actually supposed to be that bright pink that's just made with red and white and it the brush had some blue on it it didn't fully clean it i don't think i think i hit no for the clean so it went dark blue to a pink and made that purple and i decided i actually liked that mistake and rather than painting it the correct color i just left it with that half pink half blue circle so another thing that i'm interested in doing in future code is you'll notice i pull out the hair dryer and i dry an area but I actually don't know where the robot's gonna paint next, so I might not even need to spend time drying that area. I could have it go to a different area. So something about where it won't place a shape onto a recent spot that has wet paint will be interesting to potentially code, but for now, I just let it go randomly all over the page. Now that red that it's just painted, that's the first time it's painted that dark red and it's actually quite transparent. So I'm going to be putting a lot of layers of paint, but you can see that the lower edge to the camera actually was quite messy. And so I'm painting the light pink and the dark red to try to fix that edge. And I'm going to be doing a lot of fixing in there because they are such distinct colors and I want to keep the edges hard. So now I'm even coming in with a tiny brush to try to fix up that spot. And I think I might spend some time trying to place that straight edge that it did end up messing up a little bit better in future paintings. So there's that yellow again that isn't really having good coverage and I have to go in again and paint it. And this yellow especially is not going to be great because it has both dark blue and light blue underneath it. But now I'm coming to the last few shapes, just watching the time, and I will end up finishing these shapes and then closing up the paints. And I will show you the final version again before the end of the video, but I just wanted to thank you for watching this far. And if you are interested in more of these videos, please follow my work on YouTube. I will post this video alongside the painting on my website and please connect and share your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you think, but I'm excited to keep going with these paintings and see how over time I will be developing with the robot. And especially because I'm recording my thoughts on these sped up videos, it'll be interesting to see if I actually follow my brainstorming ideas or how it changes and evolves over time but this was an interesting painting to do and hopefully the next painting won't take five hours because there was also a few days of coding before I was able to get this painting going. I think this is the final circle. I can tell it's not the right color. It was, and I just let the robot just mix the wrong color because I knew I would fill it in. So now I'm closing up the paints. You could see even Brad's feet there because he came to talk and check on me, but that's the painting.